Good evening. This is Dr. Irving. I'm here to share with you the plan that we currently have in district regarding the opening of schools. We are providing this plan on the evening of July 28th in an effort uh, to share the information with those who might be observant of the holiday that's taking place on July 29th. With that said, we want to get right into the plan and talking about opening of our schools. The presentation in length is roughly going to be about 25 to 30 minutes or so as we move forward. So the state of New Jersey requires that all districts return to school in some form or fashion uh, in a live instruction model. Uh, the state requires that we take into account our conditions for learning, leadership and planning, policy and funding, and continuity of learning for that matter. In addition, the DOE requires that social distancing must be a priority in our schools. Face coverings must be adhered to. There needs to be limited capacity in our schools and districts must uh, continue to have you know, effective cleaning and disinfecting measures as we move forward. Other requirements states require, the state require school districts to explore is the use of their cafeteria and how they were socially distant in a cafeteria and serve meals. The quality of recess, and how recess will be administered in schools cohorting of students, and most importantly, busing and social distancing on busing per the CDC guidelines. It's important for us to begin with data. We began in June, June of this year with a survey of our parents. We had roughly 500 respondents. Um, as many of you know, we serve roughly around 4,000 students. So we've got give or take 10% of our student or parent population for that matter. But some key points that became very crystal part of this process, that 80% of our parents indicated that their children engaged in remote learning moderately or to a great deal. We're happy to hear that. But we also recognize that parents had some concerns. They had concerns relating to social distancing, the social emotional welfare of their students. 58% of our parents indicated that they wanted to ensure that they received communication from my office, and you will continue to get that. But most importantly, and this is a really important note, 30% of our families indicated that they were leaning toward not sending their students back to school at all. And again, this was in June, uh, even before uh, the changes that have been happening in our country that we're going through right now. There are also a parent, a series of parent focus groups in which parents express their concern regarding wearing of mask, uh, the utility of remote learning, the limiting the frequency of movement in our school buildings and the safety precautions that exist. Parents also share their opinions on the different models that we provided and recommended in the midst of that conversation. Please note that our plan for reopening uh, does mimic the state's plan. Uh, we have a stage one through stage four plan. We acknowledge that at any given time, um, you know, we could move back to stage one, which is an all remote or all virtual learning platform. We are recommending for this plan, uh, a plan that is indicative of stage two and three of the state, which is a hybrid blended learning model. We hope uh, and endeavor over the course of the next year uh, or so to get back to that new normal the state recommends, which is for us in stage four, our in-school full-time instructional model. So what does this look like for our general education students? The Teaneck Public Schools will be utilizing what we're calling the AB or the alternating four day hybrid model, whereby students will attend school in person uh, for a full day, two days per week. Our students, as we say in bullet, you see in bullet two, will be cohorted. And cohort A will go to school Monday to Wednesday. Cohort B will be in school, in school, in person, Tuesday and Thursday. On the days in which the students are not physically in school, our students will be home, logged into uh, their class in a live classroom uh, that they would normally be in if they were in person. So to be clear, if I am a student in cohort A and I go to school Monday and Wednesday, on Tuesday and Thursday when I'm home, I'll be logging into the live class that my teacher is teaching to the cohort B students. Our teachers will be working with our virtual students and with our in-class students. Fridays will be used for Google Classroom, uh, assignments and assessments when necessary. So how does this model play out uh, at the building level? Well, for our preschool students, we'll follow the regular class schedule. 
Um, in addition, there'll be a lot of times for hand washing in between activities. Activities will of course have to be modified and we're using suggestions and recommendations from the state as we move forward. For our elementary students, elementary learners, as well as our middle school learners are gonna follow the very same model in which instruction will happen uh, in one particular class. We are doing our best to limit the movement of students uh, at all grade levels, at the elementary and middle school levels. When possible, elective teachers such as music, art, or language, et cetera, they will come into the classroom where students will be in an effort, again, to limit the amount of movement that is taking place throughout the day. Uh, as I shared before, the middle school learners will follow the same model as our elementary. Our high school students will be very different. High school students, given the volume of courses, different courses that are offered at the high school, high school students will be traveling from classroom to classroom. Stairwells uh, will be identified as up and down stairwells in order to limit interaction among students. High school classrooms will utilize checkerboard seating <clears throat> and all students will receive personalized desk guards and barriers in accordance with the CDC guidelines. For our special needs students, we will follow the IEPs of all families to ensure that the individual education programs are indeed met. Students who are in self-contained classes will be receiving instruction full-time, four days a week. Social distancing protocols will indeed be in place. Students in practical programs, <clears throat> grades nine through 12, will also receive in-person instruction full-time, four days a week. However, students who are in uh, in-class support programs or pull out resource support classes or replacement programs, they will take place in the AB hybrid model. Paraprofessionals will be available in-person and virtually for those students who need support. Related service providers will arrange a schedule within the normal school hour to provide services per student's IEP. And most importantly, our Fridays will be used for Google Classroom assignments, assessments, and if we need to do related services, the ability to bring students into the building if need be. Additional resources that will be available to our families, we will continue with our CPAG meetings. And I wanna thank our director and our CPAG community for the work that they continue to do. Parent and guardian workshops will be arranged to facilitate support as we move forward in this model. Teaching staff, child study team members, and related service providers will be available during the normal school hours to support parents and families. Service providers will conduct, will contact parents and guardians to ensure that these services are implemented in accordance with the student's IEP. We'll be updating our website regularly. New and uh, standing IEP meetings with child, the child study teams will be done virtually uh, and when necessary in person if requested. For our English language learners, the district English language learners will have the option of opting in for full-time in-district instruction or adhering to the AB hybrid schedule. Irrespective of that schedule, all English language learners will be provided at least with one period of instruction every day by a certified ESL teacher. Our language instruction will be allocated in conjunction with the school schedule for instruction in the core subject areas. Parent and community input will be continued as we provide support to our L population. Content teacher areas will also receive additional professional development to support Ls in a virtual environment. As we talk through uh, this conversation around school opening, it's important for us to note that we, we are recommending from the administration is a year long continuum of learning for our students. To that end, we'll be offering an after-school tutoring program available for all students in district. In order to ensure equity with instruction, the district will work with faculty to facilitate these after-school after tutoring groups. Sessions will range from 60 to 75 minutes of fully virtual live instruction that will take place in the late afternoon or early evening or potentially on a Saturday. Students will be cohorted in learning communities of no more than five students over the course of 30 weeks. Faculty will be paid a stipend to facilitate the aforementioned groups. Signups uh, for the after-school tutoring program will be facilitated by your school's tutoring program coordinator. In addition to our tutoring program, we'll be offering again this summer, our summer bridge program. The Teaneck Public School District will offer uh, a district-wide summer bridge program in the 
summer of 2021. The program is again for incoming first through 12th grade students. We will review a series of different areas relative to instruction as we move forward. And most importantly, students must be currently enrolled in the Teaneck Public Schools. We will also be providing instructional support relative to technology. How do we plan to do that? Well, first and foremost, all staff and students grades pre-K through grade 12 will have Chromebooks that they'll be utilizing. It's important to note that these Chromebooks will be available to every single student. We'll also be providing hotspots to families who don't have reliable internet access as they move forward. We also will be providing web cameras to teaching staff uh, who to deliver virtual instruction. If indeed we move back to stage one and have to go fully virtual again, we will be providing uh, these cameras to our staff to utilize. We also will be increasing our district bandwidth to ensure staff and student success. We'll be hiring additional technology staff as we move forward. Additionally, for uh, parents, guardians, teachers who have questions relative to technology, simply email our tech department, techhelp at teenageschools.org. <clears throat> So now let's discuss our safety protocols. Uh, it is not easy as we propose the recommendations that we have, but we acknowledge that our protocols are, are, will be put in place to mitigate risk, to ensure as best as reasonably possible the safety of our students and our staff and our parents. With that said, effective immediately, I'm recommending to the Board of Education that we place a moratorium on fall and winter sports in school assemblies and after school activities. In addition to that, a school safety officer will be assigned to each school to, to ensure adherence to our protocol as we move forward. Mask and face coverings will be required at all times, except when eating in a cafeteria or participating in physical education. We'll require all students and staff of the middle and high school to have their IDs readily, readily available, especially in the midst of the fact that we will be wearing face coverings. Throughout our buildings, uh, personal protective equipment, PPE instructions will be visible to all staff and students indicating social distancing, washing of their hands, wearing a face mask. Cleaning protocols will also be implemented throughout our daily process to ensure surfaces are clean throughout our building. You see here uh, that this uh, diagram represents the various uh, cleaning surfaces that will need to be addressed as we move forward it is essentially will serve as a checklist for us as we move forward. So when talking about in-school requirements, uh, as we know, social distancing uh, is the law of the land per the CDC. And so again, we'll be requiring the use of face masks or face shields. There'll be frequently washing of hands and disinfecting of hands. I'm happy to report that we'll be adding in several hand sanitizing stations in all our school buildings. Uh, face shields will be required for teachers. There'll be portable desk guards for students. We will be limiting the sharing of books, <clears throat> papers, and documents uh, as we move forward. Lockers will not be used for middle and high school students. And again, we'll be doing our best to limit the travel of students to different classrooms. As you see here, there is a series of different uh, desks uh, and shields that we'll be utilizing. Examples of what social distancing in a cafeteria and what a auditorium may look like and what social distancing relative to lineup and checking in at schools will look like and what a social distance classroom looks like. Again, uh, we, were, we are endeavoring to have no more than nine to 12 students in any social distance classroom. <clears throat> Additionally, we will have decals around the buildings uh, to indicate uh, our safety measures as we move forward. We'll be providing starter kits for our staff as we begin the year. We'll also be providing starter kits for our students uh, as they begin the year as well. It is important to note that it, it, it is a responsibility of our parents to provide appropriate PPE for their children as we move forward with the rest of the year. With regard to busing, we are requiring mask and face covering be worn by our drivers, aides, and students upon entering the bus. Students will board the bus uh, by filling the back rows first, and then of course, filling as they move forward. Where possible, we will also be assigned, assigning seats for students. 
Windows will be cracked to provide better ventilation. School buses will be cleaned and disinfected in between their routes. Drivers and aides will have daily health checks. We'll also be having posted signs to reinforce social distancing. And where possible, siblings will be, uh, will be assigned to sit together as they move forward if they go to the same school. <clears throat> when talking about food distribution, breakfast and lunch will be provided daily for all students. Breakfast and lunch will be grab and go at this point in time in which students will be eating in their classrooms. But that can change uh, if indeed our principals are able to stagger and socially distance our students in their respective cafeterias. That decision will be left up to the building principals. In addition, there'll be available daily grab and go breakfast and lunch for students to take home for the next day in which they will not be uh, in class on their virtual days. For those students who are fully virtual, there'll be daily grab and go meals uh, you know, for students to pick up. Uh, that'll be available at Bryant School and at the high school at this point in time. <clears throat> That was a mistake, excuse me. There we go. Uh, in addition, our safety protocols. As we, we will be establishing dedicated isolation areas for students, staff who exhibit COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, in the event of a school or district office has a case of COVID-19, we will contact the Teaneck Health Department and take their direction for quarantining, cleaning, and isolation or closure. Our district policies will need to be finalized to address COVID-19 reporting as we move forward. We also need to revisit our protocol for visitors. We are requiring all visitors to have an appointment before they arrive. They must uh, utilize a government issued ID or some form of identification. All visitors will be required to wear a mask and observe social distancing. And when possible, we'll be encouraging visitors <clears throat> to meet virtually as they meet with staff. Now let's talk about our staff. Uh, we have amazing teachers in our district, and we know that our teachers uh, are going to be our frontline workers as we move forward. And so we have to take very seriously this process as we move forward. Uh, we are prepared to support our teachers and provide them the support that they need. And in doing so, all of the related uh, policies and areas you see here have to be visited. <clears throat> that means that we will abide by the CDC's recommendation we will also re revisit our current visitor policy. We will designate an isolation space in our schools to ensure that all staff and students are safe. We will also will be creating a contract tracing policy as we move forward. It's important to note that all policies are the purview of the Board of Education. In addition, we'll need to provide professional development to our teachers as we begin the school year. And that will be involved, that will involve planning, pre preparing, and responding to our educational models, workplace guidelines, hand washing and hand sanitizing, uh, the OSHA mask requirements. For our 10-month employees, you know, that PD would take place the first four days of school. For our 12-month employees, we will, you know, endeavor to get that done before September 1st. In addition to that, we'll be implementing a employee health tracking system where employees will be self-monitoring uh, their health uh, related uh, conditions as they move forward. We also acknowledge that on Fridays, uh, you know, there will be a lot of work that needs to get done relative to planning. With that said, we'll be requiring all staff to report to their school buildings on Fridays. Uh, and on those days, staff may be needed to continue to meet uh, and work with students in small groups. Uh, they may be needed to participate in vertical articulation and grade level meetings. They may be needed to engage in professional development sessions um, or participate in department area uh, meetings um, and or content area meetings if necessary. <clears throat> we acknowledge that certain policies will need to be revisited relative to cameras in the classroom. We also need to work with our union to ensure that the allotted time for instruction meets the TTCA bargaining agreement um, and that we are still adhering to the state 20-hour professional development requirement as required by code. Now, uh, the district will require uh, all staff, all staff, teaching and administrative staff to receive a COVID-19 test before they come back to campus. New hires will be required to submit medical documentation as part of their onboarding process. 
Um, for those staff members who <clears throat> identify that they may be at higher risk, we will follow the guidance of the Center for Disease Control. The CDC uh, recommends that those individuals over the age of 65, anyone with an underlying medical condition may have a, a, a potential higher risk of exposure to COVID-19. Those employees may request reasonable accommodations, which includes assistance and changes to their position or workplace uh, that will enable that employee to be able to do their job uh, in a safe manner. Employees who test positive COVID-19 will need to self-quarantine for a minimum of 14 days after receiving a positive test. The Human Resource Management Department will be notified effective immediately. Those employees will be eligible under the CARES Act for the uh, FMLA 14-day paid provision. In order to return to work, those employees will need clearance from a medical profession to be able to do so. What if you're exposed or you believe you're exposed? Employees who have been identified that they have been exposed to COVID-19 are advised to self-quarantine and should consult their health care provider effective immediately and, no and notify our human resource department. Employees will be expected to work remotely. Additionally, they should self-quarantine for a period of, no of up to 14 days from their last exposure and then be monitored by the health care professional and be cleared by the health care professional prior to their, re their return. <clears throat> We take student health very seriously. And so we are doing our best to provide as many student uh, health supports as we move forward. That includes our outreach workers at the elementary, our school counselors at the middle and high school, our form counselors at the middle and high school, our school counseling, excuse me, our student assistance coordinator, uh, our, scare, our care plus program that works at the middle school. We are, we are working to continue with our mental health initiative at the elementary and the middle schools. We also are providing webinars for, for students and parents and families. And we're also exploring student and peer support groups um, you know, at various grade levels. We also pro be providing after school care for our families via our SAC program. Um, our SAC program will begin September 14th and run through December 22nd. We'll be reassessing SAC in November. We will be providing, we will be providing SAC in every single one of our school buildings for this year. With regard to the remote learning option, we acknowledge the fact that the governor last week Friday um, indicated that districts must provide an all remote learning option for families. We are currently working through the process and are in, our, in the process of you know, developing a form um, and an evaluation to do so, and we're looking to release that by mid-August. Moving forward, um, there is a lot of work that has to get done. We will be having a working faculty group who I'll be meeting with over the course of you know, the end of this month and all of August as we hammer out very important instructional issues. There'll be a series of superintendent town hall meetings. There'll be an FAQ document for parents and students and for staff. There'll be a series of PSAs released for, for parents and students. In addition to that, we are pushing back the start of the school year. The first day of school will now be September 8th for students. In addition to that, we will be augmenting our new teacher orientation and our central registration program as well. But yet, there still are outstanding issues. And so we acknowledge we still have to work through our remote learning option. We know that we have to work with faculty and staff who have pre-existing conditions or just concerns. We also know we need to address the future of, of athletics and extracurricular activities for the rest of the year. And lastly, the completion and approval of COVID-19-related COVID related board policies. I want to be clear with you that I'm sure that I have raised more questions than I have given answers to. And I want to be very clear with our parents that we are working diligently to provide those answers in a timely manner. We ask for your patience and understanding that this is a close to impossible task that we are endeavoring to put together. But we are doing so, and we're doing so with the health and safety of our students our faculty, staff, and our parents in mind. But we also acknowledge that we have a job to do. The governor has required that schools provide in-person instruction, and we are going to make that happen. And we're gonna do that with a high level of quality that we know we can do. The TNIC advantage is real. I thank you all so much for listening to this presentation, and I wish you a wonderful rest of the summer, and please be safe. Thank you.